What should have easily been Mad Max meets Star Wars in a crazy apocalyptic planet ended up being a poor man's Guardians of the Galaxy. Man, what a disappointment. I love the Borderlands video games, but this movie was not it. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing the Borderlands movie. Again, right off the top, I said it in my intro. I love the Borderlands video games. I'm such a massive fan of them. I remember back in the day when the first one was coming out, I did not have enough money to buy that game, but I wanted it so bad. I had been following it back from the original days when it was on Game Informer and it premiered in the magazine. And before it was even this weird, unique comic art style, I was so excited for it. I remember. I remember like vividly selling, like if you remember the video game Guild of War, selling my account and everything for that just so I could afford this game. And it had always been a big part of that childhood part of me of loving the first Borderlands and then jumping into two and loving it. And pre pre-sequel's fine, but then falling all over in love with it again with Borderlands 3. And I've been so excited for this movie ever since it was originally announced. And then Eli Roth joined in as the director who I like some of his movies. I'm, I'm not going to like disgrace that in any means, but I, I, you know, he's not my favorite director. And that gave me a little bit of a red flag. I, th I thought th this could go one or two ways. This could look like a schlocky cheap film, or it could actually be a big surprise. And he could really come forward with the humor, the gore, everything of that nature. And I don't want to attack Eli Roth. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but this movie is not good. This movie is actually really boring. And that says a lot because Borderlands video games, at least for me, are not even close to boring. They're so much fun with their humor, with their mission variety, with their landscape, with the world of Pandora. And in this, it makes it to be one of the most generic things you've ever seen. And that sucks. It even sucks that you get the likes of Kate Blanchett, an Oscar winning actress, to play Lilith. And she can't even save this movie, but she's good. We'll talk about that in my pros. But overall, I was very disappointed in the Borderlands movie. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Are you a fan of the video games? Are you not? Maybe you had more enjoyment than me in some sort of capacity. And of course, we will be talking about it on next Thursday's episode of Into the Geekverse. We'll be going a little bit more deeper into the spoilers of this movie. So this review will be a non-spoilers. You are safe here. But without further ado, let's dive into at least some of my pros because... I can look at some of the good things of a movie like this. And one of the good things is the popcorn bucket from AMC. Got that. That thing's cool. I just wanted a clap trap for the room. Jumping into my actual pros now. Uh, Kate Blanchett is the scene stealer in this. She is the best part about this movie in every sort of light. And that is not like, again, I, I cannot express this enough how good she is as Lilith. You can really tell she got the walk down. She got the movements down. She got every aspect of what I would envision Lilith in live action to be. And I actually think she's phenomenal in this. Like genuinely, like she tries her best with the dialogue, but the movement, the look, everything, I thought she was great. Same thing goes for Jack Black's Claptrap, which I kind of rolled my eyes. I was like, okay, I get it. You're getting a big name voice actor to do the voice, but Claptrap was actually kind of fun and kind of the same point of what Claptrap is in the video game. So I was pleasantly surprised by that, to say the least. Alongside that, I also thought Ariana Greenblatt was also pretty damn good as Tiny Tina. She's also one of my favorite characters in Borderlands. Wasn't her performance that pissed me off. Wasn't a performance that blew me away, but she did nail down most of the essence of what Tiny Tina is, so I can at least say that. Genuinely, like, the rest of the cast is pretty solid. Like, they just don't do enough with them. Some of that's Kevin Hart's Roland, Jamie Lee Curtis as Tannis, Florina Matuna as Craig. The list goes on and on from there. They portray these video game roles as best as they can with the little bit of dialogue and the terrible script that they have here, but that that's enough to say. My last pro... It really much is the production design. I will say sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it looks really good and they really brought the video game to life in certain aspects that kind of reminded me of that. Even though it's not that comic book graphic style, it sometimes really does feel like the planet of Pandora, even certain locations such as Sanctuary that they actually brought to life. And it kind of did again, take me back to the video games of sometimes walking into these locales for the first time or even jumping in one of the vehicles. And I have to say that I will acclaim them for that. They did a decent job bringing the world to life. One last notable thing. I do know that Eli Roth did not direct the reshoots for this movie. And I know they just said it was because he wasn't available, but I really don't believe that. Tim Miller came in to direct these. And I think he is just an action superstar, whether it's with Deadpool or Terminator Dark Fate. 
And I think you can kind of feel that in here. There are certain action scenes in here with a lot of pizzazz and more energy than others. And I'm willing to bet that those action scenes I liked more were probably a part of the reshoot. So some of the action was decent. That said, let's dive into my issues on why this movie's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It, and like I said, most of it really just stems down to that this movie is just boring. It's very dull. The humor isn't really there. None of the jokes are fresh or creative. There are a lot of the same things that you've heard countless times before. And one of the things that actually I didn't even notice till midway through is that this movie is PG-13 when the video games are heavy M rated. This should have been an R-rated movie, and I don't know if they made that decision later in the editing room to strip back the blood, strip back any cursing, or if this was like an original decision. Either way, I think an actual R-rating would have maybe assisted this movie a little bit more. Like, There's certain action scenes where I was like, that head should have been blown off, there should have been a ton of gore there, there should have been gore there. Even other times where I feel a more provocative or raunchy joke may have hit than just a poo-poo and a caca and a pee-pee kind of joke. And I genuinely mean that, like, there is a lot of childish humor in here, and that's okay, like, Borderlands is known for that, but within the mix of raunchiness is kind of what brings those ones to life. This, that provocative nature is very much missing from Borderlands, and I actually think that is something that should have been here. I think that's actually one of the parts that loses the style and essence of what Borderlands is, and I say that again as a fan of the video game, but just as someone who loves movies, look at this film itself, and just rolled my eyes at a lot of predictable things. The story feels like it has zero energy and movement and momentum. And I honestly like watching it. I, I think like the first five minutes is a little bit rough. Once Lilith comes into the picture, I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I don't, I think I might be one of the few people in the fucking world to like this movie. And she gets to Pandora. And then the story keeps going. And once it just, there just feels no energy to anything. It just feels like everyone is just sleepwalking through these scenes and sleepwalking through these designs and production. And I just felt nothing watching this movie. When I heard it was bad, I was expecting, oh, you know, maybe like it'll be so bad that I like it. But it's not even that. Like nothing in here feels grand or epic and as i mentioned this should have easily been mad max meets star wars in the craziest planet you possibly could have gone to and it's none of that it's a poor man's guardians of the galaxy putting together a misfit team that should not be working together but in the end of the day finds their reason to it's okay if you gave the team personality to act off of Again, they try, but these characters don't really interact besides such small little conversation. And if I'm comparing this now to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is what it is clearly trying to be, the first Guardians of the Galaxy develops these characters, builds up the relationship, builds them up to where when they work together, you believe it. In this, I didn't believe why they worked for each other. I also didn't believe why they were still sticking around with one another. A lot of that stems to zero character development at all. Like Lilith gets a little bit towards the back half, but at that point it's already too late and I already assumed that that was what was going on. I say that because the film is predictable. Something that I saw coming from the first 20 minutes. Adapting a thing like this, again, even if you change up the lore, change up certain things with the characters, the main point of your thing is to make a damn good movie or at least a very entertaining one. And that is not what's done here. Like I said from the start, some of the performances in here are really trying their best and Kate Blanchett cannot save this movie but she is really good and easily the best part I didn't mind Jack Black's claptrap thought he was fun I thought the production design was solid and some of the action was decent but for a majority of the movie I didn't laugh I didn't smirk and I kind of just rolled my eyes through a lot of these different things there's fun easter eggs seriously but this is a waste of money and time a boring depiction of one of the wildest and craziest games to ever exist. And as a massive fan of the games, I cannot believe that they messed up what should have been Mad Max meets Star Wars. Again, Kate Blanchett is easily the best part about this. I know that's probably a shocker to many of you. <laughs> Sarcasm included. But 
I I can't recommend this movie whatsoever, not to fans, not to anyone going to the theaters, not even when it hits streaming. I I genuinely like the more and more I think about it, the more and more I'm mad that I wasted my time watching this. But I wanted to support it. I wanted to give it a shot. Just didn't hit it for me. So with all that said, I'm gonna give this movie a D minus. It's close. This close to going an F. I haven't given an F in a while. But thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy.